Hi guys, I'm back. Today it's the 8th of May. 7th. Okay. Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm today is the 7th of May 2021. Today I'm going to John 5 to 9, Proverbs 7 and Psalm 129. Let's get started. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish feasts. In Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, is a pool. In the Aramaic language, it is called Bethsaida. It is surrounded by five layers of columns with a roof over them. Here, here a great number of disabled people used to lie down. And among them were those who were blind, those who could not walk, and those who who could hardly move. One person was there who had not been able to walk for 38 years. Jesus saw him lying there. He knew that the man had been in that condition for a long time. So he asked him, Do you want to get well? So the the man replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when an angel stirs up the water. I tried to get in, but someone else always goes down and hurt me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. The man was healed right away. He picked up his mat and walked. This happened on the Sabbath day. So the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, This is the Sabbath day. The Lord does not allow you to carry your mat. But he replied, The one who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. Then he asked, Who is this fellow? Who told you to pick it up and walk? The one who held, who was healed, had no idea who it was. Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple. Jesus said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sitting, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away. He told the Jewish leaders it was Jesus who had made him well. And Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath day. So the Jewish leaders began to approach him. Jesus defended himself. He said to them, My father is always doing his work. He's, he's working right up to this day. I am working too. For this reason, the Jewish leaders tried even harder to come. According to them, Jesus was not only breaking the law of the Sabbath day, he was even calling his God, God his own God. He was making himself equal with God. Jesus in I'm not about to tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He can only do he can do only what he does. The son or He can only do he can do only what he sees his father do. What the father does, the son also does. This is because the father loves the son. The father shows him everything he does. Yes, and the father will show him some even greater works than these. And you will be amazed. The father raises the dead and gives them life. In the same way, the son gives life to anyone he wants to. I say the father does not judge him. He is given the son the task of judging. Then all the people will honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the son does not honor the father. He sent him. What I'm about to tell you is the one who hears my word and believes him who, who sent me has eternal life. They will not be judged. They have crossed through from death to life. What I'm about to tell you is true. The time is coming for me to give life. In fact, it is already begun. The devil hears the voice of the son of God. There is a hear who will live. The Father has life in himself. He has allowed the Son also to have life in himself. And the Father has given him the authority to judge. This is because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this. A time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. They will all come out of their graves. People who have done what is good will rise and live again. People who have done what is evil will rise and be found guilty. I can do nothing by myself. I judge only as I hear. And my judging is fair. I do not try to please myself. I try to please the one who sent me. If I am a witness about myself, what I say is not true. If there is someone else who is a witness in my faith, then I know that what he says about me is true. You have sent people to John the Baptist. He hears me a witness to the truth. I do not accept what a person says. I only, I only talk about what John says so that you can be safe. John was like a lamp that burned and gave life. For a while he chose to enjoy this, his life. What I say about myself is more important than what John says about me. I am doing the works the Father gave me to finish. These works are a witness that the Father sent me. The Father who sent me is in himself a witness about me. You have never heard his voice. You have never seen what he really looks like. And his word does not live in you. That's because you do not believe the one he sent. He studied the scriptures carefully. He studied them because he thinks they'll give you eternal life. 
The scriptures you study are a witness about me, for you refuse to come to me and receive life. I do not accept praise from human beings, but I know I know that you do not have love for God in your heart. Now you have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. You accept praise from one another, but you do not see the praise that comes from the only God. So how can you believe? Do you not see? Do not think I will bring charges against you in front of the Father. Moses is the one who does that, and he is the one you build your hopes on. Do you believe Moses? Then you shall believe me. He wrote about me. But you do not believe what he wrote. So how are you not good? going to believe what I say? Sometime after this, Jesus crossed over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. His is called the Sea of T- Tiberias. A large crowd of people followed him. They had seen the signs he, was, he had done by healing sick people. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside. There he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him. So he said to Philip, Where can we bribe bread for these people to eat? He asked his own age, Tresco. He already knew what he was going to do. Philip asked and answered him, Suppose we were able to buy enough bread for each person to take a bite. That would take more than half a year's pay. Another of his disciples spoke up. It was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He said, Here's a boy with five small loaves of barley bread. He also has two loaves of small fish. But how far will that go in such a large crowd? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Then Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks. He handed out the bread to those who received. He gave them as much as they wanted. Then he did the same with the fish. When all of them had enough to eat, Jesus spoke to his disciples, Gather the leftover pieces, he said. Don't waste anything. So they gathered what was left over from the five barley loaves. And he filled twelve baskets with the pieces left by those who had eaten. The people saw the sign that Jesus did. Then they began to pray, say, This must be the prophet who was supposed to come into the world. The Jews knew that they planned to come and force him to be their king. So he went away again to a mountain by himself. And when evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the Sea of Galilee. There they got into a boat and headed across the lake toward the Cape of Nome. But by now it was dark. Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind to his gone, and the water became rough. They rowed about three or four miles. Then they saw Jesus coming toward the boat. He was walking on the wood. They were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they agreed to take him into the boat. Right away the boat reached the shore where they were he- heading. <coughs> The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the lake realized something. They saw that only one boat had been there. They knew that Jesus had not gone into it with his disciples, and they knew that the disciples had gone away with the lake. Then some boats arrived from Tiberias. It was near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord gave thanks. The crowd realized that Jesus and his disciples were not there. So they got into a boat and went to Cape Nile to look for Jesus. They found him on the other side of the lake. They asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Remember I had to tell you the truth. You are not looking for me because of you saw the signs I did. You are looking for me because you ate the loaves until you were full. Do you not work for food that spoils? Work for food that lasts forever. That is the food the Son of Man will give you. For God the Father has put a seal of approval on him. When they asked him, then they asked him, What does God want from us? What works does he want us to do? Jesus answered, God's work is to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign will you give us? What will you do so we can see and believe you? Long ago, our people ate the manna in the desert. It was written in scripture. The Lord gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Nehemiah said to them, What am I about to tell you is true? It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven. It, he gives life to the world. Sir, so they said, they always give us this bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But it is just as I as I told you, you've seen me, and you still do not believe. Everyone the Father gives me will come to me. <clears throat> I will never send away anyone who comes to me. I have not come down from heaven, heaven to do what I want to do. I have come to do what the one who sent me wants to do. <clears throat> the one who sent me doesn't want me to lose anyone he has given me. He wants me to raise them up on the last day. 
My father wants all who look to the sun and believe in him to have eternal life. I'll raise them up on the last day. Then the Jews there began to complain about Jesus. And that's because he said, I am the bread that came down came down from heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father and mother? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop complaining among yourselves, Jesus. No one can come to me unless the Father sent me brings them. Then I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in the prophet, Go teach all of them. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who has come from God. And only he has seen the Father. What I'm about to tell you is true. Everyone who believes has life forever. I am the bread of life. Long ago your people ate the manna in the desert, and they still die. But here's the bread that comes down from heaven. A person can eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Everyone who eats some of this bread will live forever. This bread is my body, and I will give it for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. They said, How can this man give us his body to eat? He said to them, I am about to tell you the You must eat the son of man's body and drink his blood. If you don't, you have no life in you. Anyone who eats my body and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise them up on the last day. My body is real food. My blood is real drink. Anyone who eats my body and drinks my blood remains in me, and I remain in them. The living Father sent me, and I live because of him. In the same way, <clears throat> those who feed on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Long ago, your people ate man and died. But whoever eats this bread will live forever. He said this while he was teaching in the synagogue in Cape Canaan. Jesus' disciples heard this. Many of them said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining about his teaching. So he said to them, Does this upset you? Then what if you see the Son of Man go up to where he was before? The Holy Spirit gives life. The body means nothing at all. The words I have spoken to you are full of the Spirit. They give life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe, and he had known who was going to hand them over to his enemies. So he continued speaking. He said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father helps them. From this time on, many of his disciples turned back. They were no longer following. Following. They no longer followed him. You don't want to leave, oh, so do you. Jesus asked the twelve disciples. And Peter asked them, Lord, who can we go to? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Didn't I choose you, the twelve disciples? Well, one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon and Iscari. Judas was one of the twelve disciples. The lady who was going to hand Jesus over to his enemies. After this, Jesus went around and gently. He didn't want to travel around. In Judea. That's because the Jewish Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to come. The feast of booth, the Jewish feast of booth, was here. Jesus' brother Jesus' brothers said to me, can be and go to Judea. Then your disciples there will see the blessed that you do. No one who wants to be well known does go to you. Since you are the only thing, show yourself to the world. Even Jesus' own brothers did not believe in him. So Jesus told me, the time for our for me to show who I really am with my healer. He, any time, even if you direct him, so he calls the words on him, he, but they hate me. This is because I am a witness that they will tell you. He goes to the feast, and I am, I am not going enough to this feast. The person is because my time has not yet fully come. After he said this, he stayed in the room. Or when his brothers had back to the feast, he went there. He went secretly, not openly. At the feast, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus. They were asking, Where is he? Many people in the crowd were whispering about something. He is a good man. That was the fact. No, he fools the people. But no one would say anything about him openly. They were afraid of the leaders. Jesus did nothing until halfway through the feast. Then he went up into the temple to get them again to teach. The Jews there were amazed. And then he asked, how did this man learn so much without being taught? Jesus, what I teach is not mine. It comes from the one who sent, who sent me. Here's how someone can find out where all my teaching comes from God or from me. And that person must choose to do what God wants them to do. Whoever speaks on their own does it to get personal honor. 
It's only Alexis, but I don't know the one who sent him. Sent him. Mm. Mm. Sent him his truth. Nothing about him is false. Didn't Moses give you the law? But not one of you obeys the law. Why, why are you trying to kill me? You are controlled by demons. And the cried answer. Who is trying to kill you? You said to them. Jesus said to them, I did one miracle, and you are all amazed. Moses gave you circumcision, and so you circumcised the child on the Sabbath day. But circumcision did not really come from Moses. It came from Abraham. You circumcised a boy on the Sabbath day. You think, you, <clears throat> you think that if you do, you won't break the law of Moses. Then why are you angry with him? For you the man's entire body on the Sabbath day. Stop judging, I need my way to The judge in the right way. It's in the same century. Then some of the people of Jerusalem began asking questions. He said, Isn't this man or some people? Isn't this the man some people are trying to kill? There he is. He's speaking openly. They are saying the words. They are the authority. How the authority really said that they said he is themselves? They know where his name is from. And the Messiah comes. No one will know where he is from. Jesus was still teaching in the temple. He cried, Yes, you know it. And you know where I am from. If I am not here, I am not here. I am my own authority. The one who is telling me is true. You do not know that I know. Yeah, I am from him. And he is born. And he said, and he said this, they tried to, they tried to arrest him. And no one laid a hand to him. And the time for him to, the time, the time for him to show you who he really was. Really was. It's time not your car. Still, many people in the car believe in him. They said, no more of these on the side of I really do more signs with this than this man. The Pharisees had the power to throw things like this. To sit out of it. Then the chief priest and the Pharisees and the temple sent temple guards to arrest. He said, I am with you for only a short time. I'll go to the one who sent you look for me. How do you I find you I find? You can come where you can't come where I am going. But you said to one another. Now this, now this, where does this man come to go? Does he, does he think he can't play? Where do you go where people get scattered among the Greeks? Do you really go there to teach the Greeks? What did, what did he mean when, when he said, you will look for me, but you won't find me. Um, what did he mean when he said, you can't come where I am going? It was the last and first report there. You stood up and, and spoke in the Bible. He said, Now anyone who is thirsty come to me and did Does anyone believe in me? Then, then just as scripture says, Rivers of food and water will flow from the sun. Then, he said this, he meant the whole truth. Those who believe in Jesus will receive the Spirit later. If up to that time the Spirit had not been given, this was because Jesus had. No, yeah, this is the law. The people had his words. Some, some of them, this man must be the prophet we can He is, others say, he is the Messiah. Still others say, how can the Messiah come from Galilee? Galilee. So, does the scripture say that the Messiah will come from the same of the doesn't he say that he will come from the time where David lived? So the people did not agree about who he was. Someone needed to arrest him, but no one made a hand on him. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priest from the first. They asked the guards, Why didn't you bring him in? No one else spoke the way this man does, and the guards were fine. Just, don't say me. You mean that he, you mean he is called you also the Pharisees? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? No, 
But this mob knows nothing about the law. Here's a curse on me. Then Nicodemus, the Pharisee, spoke. Here's the one who had gone to, gone to Jesus. And he asked, does our Lord, does our Lord find a man guilty without hearing them first? Does not want to find out what he is doing? They replied, are you from Galilee too? Look into it. You'll find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. And then they all went home. But Jesus went to the mental levels. And sometimes he arrived again in the temple for death. As all the people gathered around him there, he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees were in the law. She had been caught committing adultery. She had been, they made a stand in front of the girl. They said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught sleeping with a man who was not her husband. In the law, Moses commanded her to kill, kill, kill such a woman by throwing stones at them. At the, throwing stones at them. Now, what do you say? They were trying to trap Jesus with that question. They wanted to have a reason to bring charges against him. And then Jesus went down and started to run on the ground with a string. They kept asking him questions. So he stood up and said to him, is any one of you not sin? Well, then you will be the first to throw a stone at her. He bent down again and went on the bed. Then Jesus heard what he had said began to go away. They left one at a time. One at a time. The older ones first. Soon only Jesus there was. Soon only Jesus was there. The woman. It was still standing there. He stood up and asked her. Woman, where are they? Hasn't anyone found you guilty? No, no one, sir. Then I went for it. Then I don't find you guilty either, Jesus said. Go on, go now and leave your, leave your life of sin. Do you speak to the people there? And he, he, uh, he said, I am the light of the... I am the life of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness. They will have that life. They will have life. The Pharisees argue with him. Here you are. And here you are, they said, appearing as, appearing as your own witness. Uh, your witness does not count. Does not count. It does count. Jesus says, even if I am a witness about myself, what I say does count. I know where I came from, and I know where I am going. I, but you have no idea where, where I come from or, or where I am going. You judge by human standards. And I, don't, I don't judge anyone. If I do judge, I don't. If we do judge, but if I do judge, what I decide is true. This is because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. Your own mother says I'm a witness of two people proves the truth about, about something. I am a witness about myself. The other witness about me is the Father who sent me. And then do they ask me, where is your father? <coughs> <clears throat> you do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father. So he spoke these words while he was teaching in the temple courtyard. He was near the palace place where the offerings were put. No one arrested him. That's because the time for him to die had not yet come. Once more, Jesus said, I am going away. You will look for me, and you will die in sin. You can't come where I am now. This made the Jews ask. Will he kill himself? Is that why he said you can't come where I am going? <clears throat> Would you say that? You are from the I am from heaven. You are from this world. I am not from this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. This, this will happen because you don't believe that I am here. He, if you do, if you don't believe, you'll certainly die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning. Jesus replied, I have a lot to say that I, that I will judge you. 
But the one who sent me can be trusted. And I will tell the world what I have heard from them. They did not understand what Jesus was telling them, that Jesus was telling them about his fault. Son of Jesus said, You will lift up of the Son of Man. <clears throat> man, then you will know that I am he. You will also know that I do nothing on my own. I speak just as the, just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what pleases him. Even while Jesus was speaking, many people believed. Many people believed in him. <clears throat> Jesus spoke to the Lord, to the Jews that had believed. If you obey my teaching, he said, you, if you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. <clears throat> they answered him, We are Abraham's children. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we have never been slaves, slaves of anyone. But how can you say that we will be set? How can you say that we will be set free? Jesus replied, "I'm about to tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. If one who sins is a slave of sin." A slave has no lasting place in the family, but a son belongs to the family forever. So if the son of man sets you free, you will, you will really be free. I know that you are Abraham's children, but you are looking for a way to come. You have no room for my blood. I am telling you what I saw when I was with my father. Mm, you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, but he is are you really Abraham's children? If you are, you will do what Abraham did. But you are looking for a way to come. I am a man who has told you the truth. I heard from God. Abraham didn't do the things you want to do. You are doing what your own father, what your own father does. Do we have the right to claim to be God's children? The objective. The only father we have is God himself. You said, if God were your father, you would love me. I have. I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. I know my words clear to you because you can't really hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. You want to obey your father's wishes. From the beginning, the devil was a murderer. He has never obeyed the truth. There is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his natural language. He does this because he is alive. He's the father of life. But because I tell the truth, you don't believe in me. Mm -hmm. yeah, can, can any of you prove, prove I am guilty of something? Am I not telling the truth? And uh, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you don't hear is that you don't belong to God. The Jews answered Jesus, aren't you, aren't you right when you say you are a Samaritan? Aren't you controlled by a demon? I am not controlled by a demon, said Jesus. I honor my father. You do not honor me. I am not seeking glory for myself. But there is one who brings glory to me. He is the judge. What I am about to tell you is true. Whoever obeys my word will never die. Then they cried, Now we know you are controlled by a demon. Abraham died. So did the prophets. Well, you say that whoever obeys your word will never die. Are you greater huh, than our father Abraham? He died. So did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I bring glory to myself, my glory means nothing. You claim that my father is your God. He is the one who brings glory to you. You did not know, but I know. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. <coughs> but I do know him, and I obey his word. Your father Abraham is filled with joy at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not even fifty years old, they said to you, and you have seen Abraham. <coughs> then have you, you have seen Abraham? What I'm about to tell you, tell you is true, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. Then they said this, they picked up stones to come. But Jesus hid himself. He slipped away from the temporary. <coughs> As Jesus went along, he saw a man who was blind. He had been blind since he was born. Jesus' disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned? Was this man brought blind because he sinned? Or what did his parents sin? The reason because this man sinned, said Jesus, the reason because his parents sinned. He was one place so that God's power could be shown by what's going to happen. While we are still doing, we must do the works of the one who sent me.
Now he's coming. And now I'm coming. While well, I am in the well, I am the light of the well. After he said this, he spit on the ground. He made some mud with the spit. And he put the mud, mud on the man's eyes. Guy, he told him, wash in the pool of Salon. Salon means scent. So the pool went in water. When he came home, able to see his neighbors and people who had seen him earlier begging, asked questions. Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? They asked. Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he looks only, he only looks like him. But the man who had been blind kept saying, I am the man, and how are your eyes open? Mm, they asked. She replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Salaam and wash. So I went and washed. Then I could see. Where is the man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. The day Jesus made the mud and opened the man's eyes was the Sabbath day. So the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied. Then I washed, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, Jesus has not come from God. He does not keep the Sabbath day. But others asked, how can a sinner do such signs? The Pharisees did not agree with one another. Then they turned again to the blind man. What do you have to say about him? They asked. It was, it was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. They did not believe. They still did not believe that the man had been blind and now could see. So they sent for his house. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was more than blind? How is that? How is it that he now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered. And we know he was born blind. But we don't know how he, how he can now see. And we don't know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is an adult. He can see for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish news. And the leaders had already made this decision about Jews. Anyone who said Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why the man's parents said, He is an adult. Ask him. Again, the Pharisees called the man who had been blind to come to him. To give glory to God by telling the truth. And they said, We know that the man who tells you is a sinner. He replied, But I don't, I, I don't know if he is a sinner or not. But I do know one thing. I was blind, but now I can see. Then they asked him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have already told you, but you didn't listen. What do you want? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they began to attack him with their words. You are this fellow's disciple, they said. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this fellow comes from. This man answered, That is really surprising. You don't know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does what he wants them to do. No one has ever heard of anyone opening the eyes of a person born by. If this man had not come from God, he could do nothing. And the Pharisees replied, When you were born, you were already deep in sin. How dare you talk like that to us? And then they threw him out of the synagogue. People heard that the Pharisees. Jesus heard that the Pharisees had thrown the man out of the synagogue. When Jesus found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? And the man asked, tell, him, tell me, so I can believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I have come into this world to judge it. I have come so that people who are blind will see. I have come so that people who can who can see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this. They asked, Lord, are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would be guilty of sin, not be guilty of sin. And since you claim you can see, you remain guilty. So, Pro Proverbs 7. My son, obey my words, store my commands, and send you. Obey my commands, and you will live. Guard my teachings as you would guard your own eyes. Tie them on your fingers. Write them on the table of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. Say to understand, you are a member of my family. They will keep you from a woman who commits adultery. They will keep you from the smooth talk of a simple wife. I stood at the window of my house, and I looked down through it. Among those who were charged, I saw a young man who had no sense. He went down the street near that single woman's corner. He walked toward the house. The sun had gone down, and the day was wet. The darkness of night was falling. A woman came out to me. She was just like a prostitute and had a clever She was one of She knows 
near him. Sometimes she's in the street, sometimes she's at other places. At every corner she waits. She took hold of the young man and kissed him. With a bold face, she spoke to him. She said, Today I offer what I have promised him. At home I have need a left of my fellowship. So he came out to me. I look for you in a fan. I have covered my bread with hollow sheets and leaves you. I have covered my bed with spices. I have used mirror, alloys, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink a bowl full of love and do more. Let's enjoy ourselves by sleeping together. My husband isn't home. He's gone on a long journey. He took his bag full of money. He won't be home for several days. She led him astray with that clever one. She timed him with a smooth tool. And all at once he followed her. He was like an ox going to be killed. He was like a deer, deer stepping into a trap. And to an arrow struck his lip. He was like a bird rushing into a trap. They would do you know it would cost him his life. And I said, Listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Don't let your heart turn to a waste. Then step onto a bus. She brought him a lot of men. She has killed a huge clam. Her house is the road to the grave. It leads down to the place of the dead. Psalm 129. My, here's what Israel would say. My enemies have treated me badly ever since I was a young nation. My enemies have treated me badly ever since I was a young nation. But they haven't won the battle. They have made deep wounds in my back. It, lo- it looks like a field of farmers playing. The Lord does what is right. Students have tied me up with ropes, but the Lord has set me free. May all those who hate Zion be driven back in shape. May they be like grass that grows on the roof of a house. It dries up before it can grow. There isn't enough of it to fill a person's head. There isn't enough to tie up and carry away. May no one who passes by say to those who hate May the blessing of the Lord be on you. May you bless you in the name of the Lord. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please pray your hands. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. It will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you are suffering on our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.